sending and receiving messages. In this lesson, we're going to start talking about sending and receiving emails. This lesson is going to be very basic, so chances are, if you've used another email program before, even if it was not Outlook, this lesson will be very easy for you. That's okay though. This lesson will also be the foundation for more advanced email settings and techniques we'll show you later in the course. Creating new email messages in Outlook 2013 is easy. All you have to do is start Outlook, then click on the new email button in the ribbon under the home tab. A new blank email will open up. If you already have Outlook started and are in a different module, simply click on the mail label at the bottom of the folder pane and then the new email in the ribbon. Once you have the new email in front of you, it's time to address it to the intended recipients. You have a few options to do this. You can type in one email address to send an email to just one person, or multiple email addresses for multiple recipients. For multiple email addresses, separate each one with a semicolon. You can also click the To button at the top of your email message and find names in your address book. Double click the names of the people you want to select to receive the email message and they'll be added for you. We'll cover address books later in this course. You can also start typing email addresses or names into the To line and check names will look up the address for you based on the addresses you have in your contacts. Just make sure that it selects the right address. When you start typing letters, Outlook will give you the matching names and addresses from the address book. You can either click on the address it suggests or keep typing. Outlook 2013 will continue to offer suggestions. So as you can see, it's easy enough to start typing an address in the To line. However, you can also type addresses into the CC line. CC stands for carbon copy. You can also type addresses into the BCC line or blind carbon copy. Let's cover all three of these options. In the to line, you can put the email address of everyone that you want to send the email to. As we've said, you can also click on the to button so you can add names and addresses from your address book. The CC line appears below the to line. CC stands for carbon copy. Let's say you're sending an email to a coworker about a project the two of you are working on. You might want to put your coworker's email address into the to line because the email is to your coworker. However, you might want to send other people a copy of the email as well, such as your boss or other people involved in the project, just to keep them in the loop. Let's clarify this just in case we've confused you. The to line is for anyone you're sending the email to. If you want to send copies of the emails to others, use the CC line. Of course, you can put all the names in the to line if you want. That's up to you. But email etiquette in this day and age requires that you use the to and cc lines when sending to email to people and sending reference copies to others. The bcc line does not appear in the new email messages by default. To make it so that it appears, click on to or cc. At the bottom of the window that appears, you'll see the bcc. Click on the names in your address book that you want to add to bcc. They'll then appear in the bcc line. bcc stands for blind carbon copy. Any address that you put in this line will not appear in the email when your recipients receive it. This means that you can send an email to your coworker by putting his or her email address in the to line, berating them for not doing their work, then BCC your boss. Your coworker will never know you sent a copy to the boss. Once you have your email addressed, you can enter a subject for the email on the subject line. Microsoft Outlook 2013 allows you to type an email message, of course, but it also gives you formatting tools to create a professional email message much the same way as you can create a professional document in Word. To compose an email message, simply click your mouse in the body of the email. A cursor will appear. The body email is a large white space below the subject line. When you see the cursor, you can start typing. We'll learn how to apply formatting to our messages in the next lesson. There are three mail formats you can choose from when creating email messages in Outlook 2013. Which one you choose will depend on what you want to send. The three formats are HTML, plain text, and rich text. You can find these formats under the Format Text tab in the ribbon of your email message. You'll only see the Format Text tab when you are creating, replying, or formatting an email. It does not appear on the main Outlook interface. Which email format you want to choose when starting to create a new email message will depend on what you're sending. The three format options that you have are HTML, which is a web programming language used to create web pages. You may want to use this if you're adding images to the body of the email or if you're using formatting such as bullet points, bold, or italics. Plain text is just as it sounds, a plain text message. It doesn't allow for special formatting such as bold, italics, or underlining. Rich text supports formatting, including bold, italics, and underlining. However, rich text formatting messages are usually converted to HTML when they're sent. 
Unless requested by the recipient or by your employer, you may want to just send HTML. Spell check is a feature that is common in the Microsoft Office suite of products. If you've used it before with other programs, then you already know what we're talking about. Spell check allows you to check emails for common spelling and grammar mistakes before you send them. You should still read over your emails and check for errors yourself, but spell check is an added backup and will catch errors you might miss. To use spell check in Microsoft Office 2013, open your email and click on the review tab. The review tab is not shown on the main Outlook interface. It only appears in the ribbon of opened email messages. Click on the spelling and grammar button in the proofing group. Outlook starts to proofread your email. If all the spelling is correct, you'll get this message. However, let's see what happens if we spell a word wrong. As you can see, I've misspelled the word hello. Spell check is underlined in red in the email, and when we click on the spell check button, it shows us the word is not in the custom dictionary and gives us suggestions to correct the spelling. To use a suggestion, click on the suggestion you want to use in the suggestions box, and click the change button on the right. You can click change all to change all instances of the misspelled word. We can also ignore the fact that Outlook thinks it's a misspelled word and accept the misspelling as correct by clicking on the ignore once button. That will leave our typo as it is. We can ignore all instances where this typo exists by clicking the ignore all button. Sometimes a word isn't misspelled, it's just not a common word and not listed in the Outlook's dictionary. In cases like this, you'd want to ignore all. You can also add this word to the dictionary by clicking add to dictionary. If this is a word that you commonly use and want to prevent Outlook from marking it as a misspelled word, it's your best bet to add the word to the dictionary. If you click on add to dictionary, Outlook will add the word for you. It's that easy. Autocorrect automatically corrects common misspelled words as you type. However, in order for it to work best, you need to configure the autocorrect feature. We'll show you how to do that, as well as how to turn spell check on, so your emails are automatically proofed for you. You won't have to click the spell check button. That's a real time saver. Go to the file tab and click on options to the left. Then click on the mail category on the left. Under the compose messages, Go to the ABC section with a check mark. If you want Outlook to automatically check spelling before you send an email, put a check in this box. This way, if you ever forget to run spell check, Outlook does it for you. It is unchecked by default. Now click on the spelling and autocorrect button to set options for autocorrect. In the window under the proofing tab, specify how you want Outlook to correct your documents. If you want to use autocorrect, click on the autocorrect options button. Now, specify what you want Outlook to correct for you as you type. Remember, autocorrect means Outlook fixes errors as you type. You can also correct math and format your text as you type by clicking on the appropriate tabs. When you're finished, click OK. Sending and receiving email in Outlook 2013 is as easy as it gets. Let's go back to our email message. To send this email, simply push send, which is to the left of the two CC buttons. Your email is then sent. For the email to be sent, you actually need some addresses in the box here. So let's put in an address. To send emails you've created and receive emails that you've been sent to you, go back to the main Outlook interface. Click the Send Receive tab on the ribbon and then go to the Send Receive group. To send and receive all messages, click on the Send Receive All folders. Select a folder from the navigation pane on the left, and then right click on it to update the folder in the ribbon. We will then update that folder by sending and receiving all items that are queued or pending. The send all button will send all unsent messages. If you only have one email account in Outlook 2013, you just need to click on your inbox and then send receive all folders. Outlook 2013 gives you three ways to read emails you receive. The first way is in the information viewer where your emails are shown in the list. This method of reading emails is new to Outlook 2013. Let's have a look at the email we've selected. It's highlighted here. First we can see the sender, which is the Outlook.com team. This message is automatically created when you set up your Outlook account. Then we see the subject line, which is a bit smaller in the black text here. Getting started with your email account. You can also see the time that it was sent to us. Then we see a preview of the message, which you can see in grey here. We can preview one, two or three lines of a message in the information viewer. We have ours set to one line. To change the number of lines you can preview in the information viewer, go to the ribbon and click on the view tab. Go to the arrangement group. 
Click the message preview button and choose one line, two lines or three lines, or to turn the preview feature in the information view off. The second way you can view email messages is in the reading pane. This is located to the right of the information viewer. If you click an email on your inbox, you'll be able to view it in the reading pane. The other way to read emails is to open emails from your inbox. Simply double click on any email in the information viewer and a new window will open with your email message. To close the email, click on the X at the top right hand side of the screen. When you receive an email message, you may want to reply to it or to send it to other people. To reply to a message, you have two ways to do that. You can reply or reply all. Reply means that you send a reply to the person who sent you the email and only that person. To send a reply, right click on the message and select reply from the drop down menu. Or you can double click to open the email, then click on the reply button in the ribbon under the message tab. You can then type your reply. You can also reply to a message directly from the reading pane. To do this, click on the email you want to read in the information viewer. The email now displays in the reading pane to the right. Click on reply or reply all at the top left of the email message. When you do this, you can reply by typing out your message right inside the reading pane. This is new to Outlook 2013. As you can see, you can also click pop out to open the reply message you're composing in a new window or discard to delete your reply to the email message. When you select reply all, you reply to the person that sent the email to you plus anyone else they sent the email to, including you. For example, if Doris sends an email to you and she CCs 10 other people, when you select reply all to answer that email, you will send a reply to Doris and those 10 other people. To use reply all, follow the same steps for reply, but select reply all instead. When you forward a message, you take a message that someone has sent to you and you send it to other people. It makes sense, doesn't it? You get the message and then send it forward. To forward a message, you can do one of two things. You can right click on the message and then select forward. Or you can double click on the message to open it and then select forward from the ribbon under the message tab. You can also forward messages from the reading pane, just as we did with reply. If you've ever attached a file to an email before, then this is going to be easy for you. An attachment is a file, such as a picture, document, spreadsheet or folder, that you can attach to an email so that it sends with the email. To add attachments to your emails in Outlook 2013, go to create your email. Click on the insert tab inside the email, go to the include group and select attach file. You can then browse through your computer's files to find the file you want to attach. If you want to attach more than one file, repeat this process. You can also attach files from your OneDrive if you have a OneDrive set up. In addition, you can also attach items such as your business card, calendar or Outlook items. To do this, select the item you want to attach from the include group on the insert tab. Outlook 2013 also makes it possible for you to preview attachments without actually opening the attachment. You can preview them in the reading pane, right where the body of your email appears. I've just sent an email to myself with an attachment to show you this concept. To preview an attachment in an open email, click on the email in the information viewer to display it in the reading pane. You can see these two buttons here inside the reading pane. The first button is for our message, where you can see the body of our message displayed here. The second is for the attachment. If you click on the attachment, it will display in the reading pane. To return to the message, click message. That said, because of viruses that come embedded in attachments, you may not want to preview attachments at all. Outlook 2013 lets you preview attachments by default, so if you don't want to preview attachments, you must turn it off manually. To do this, click the file tab, and then click options on the left. Click on the Trust Center option. Now click on the Trust Center Settings button and then click on Attachment Handling. Put a check in the box beside Turn Off Automatic Preview. If you want to turn off a specific previewer, click Attachment and Document Previewers. Clear the checkboxes for the previews that you want to turn off and then click OK. Click OK on this screen to save your changes.